from the Lone Elm Sports Park here in Olathe, Kansas. It's the 2023 U.S. AFL Super Regionals. This is round two of the women's division between the New York Magpies and the Denver Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are in the red, white, and blue. They are headed from left to right on your screen, while the Magpies are in the black and white jumpers heading from right to left. And here comes Jamie Green from the New York Magpies flying up the right side, steps and bangs this one down the line, and it will go and roll out of bounds and will have a boundary throw in. We're going to do our best with the New York Magpie numbers. They do not have them on the uh, score sheet here, but we do recognize a number of players, including number 42, Cricket Temple, who puts her hands up for the ruck. She's going against Kylie Hahn. Hahn able to win the hit out forward, and going after it and getting it and picking that one up is uh, one of the Magpie players, Rita Hill, in there for Denver. And then stepping away is Green, looking for Temple over the top, couldn't find her. And, uh, or check that, that's uh, 30, is, 30 is Green. Temple had it and then was dispossessed and then goes in. That's going to be high contact on Cricket Temple. And Temple, one of two players over six feet that the Magpies have, Emma Moss, the other one. This is Iris Wu, who has the footy. It's a barrel down the middle. Clean bowls green. Going after it is Lindsey Castanek, who was big in the opening round win against Texas earlier this morning. Wu picks it up. Little shovel pass. Looking for Bremner, who was also big. Kicks that one out to the near side. Picked up by Poor Boy. Sells a little candy. Throws that one onto the left towards the sticks. And it's going to roll, and it's going to go through for a behind. The first score of the game, and it goes to the Denver Bulldogs. They go on to one point on the Watch AFL scoreboard. Denver winning 50-6 to over Texas in their first game today. 44-1. to Minnesota defeated New York in their opener. And, of course, the Magpies last year at the Eastern Regionals were in a three-way tie that they ended up on the short stick of one percentage and hoping for to perhaps sneak up and perhaps upset this Denver Bulldogs side. And Worth mentioning that New York has members of from Cincinnati, Columbus, and the North Star Blue Ox as well. Ball goes in the middle of the ground, looking again for Hahn. Picked up by Dykes, spun around, out the back, played out to the near side, looking for either Kastanik or Bremner, falls in between them. Ball scoots on into the corner, little shovel pass to Bremner, in the middle for Kastanik, just out of her reach. Picked up in front, and here is Lindsay Kastanik, who runs in and goes bang. On the watch, AFL scoreboard, Denver 1-1-7, and New York no score. I believe that is Kastanik's third goal of the afternoon. The Bulldogs, regional champions in the Central Region in 2018 also in the Western Regionals in 2017, and those are the only two that they've had. In 2019, they hosted the uh, Western, the uh, Central Regionals, and fell to the Minnesota Freeze, who they will play in the final game. Minnesota currently playing Texas over to our right. Umpires ready. We're underway once again. Knocked forward by the Magpies. Hands out the back. Picked up and picked up by Dykes, who bangs this one forward. Castanek off of her chest, watched by LeVictor. And then taken down by Marie LeVictor after the player. Check that, taken down by Casillas afterwards. And umpire Lori Roop says, give that to me, we'll ball it up. Meyer tosses the ball to the heavens. A little bit of advantageous towards Hahn. Temple with her long arms, able to get to it. Squirts out the back, looking for Iris Wu. Wu, shovel pass to Dykes. Dykes, short pass for poor boy. Just past her. Here comes Janie Green, who's able to pick it up. Cuts to the inside. Goes into the pocket, where there's absolutely nobody there. Running on and getting to it is the uh, 49, but she's hauled down and a great tackle. And that is by Howie Castanek. And with the way Texas was playing, with the way that Texas was playing, we didn't really see Howie too much, but the former captain from the USA national team still playing. And 
and she runs this one through on her own. Gets runs 14.99 meters, and the mark is taken over the top there by Kylie Hahn. Hahn waits, waits, kicks this one down in the middle. The pack forms. Casillas was there, knocked down, going after it and picking that one up and moving around and sending that one inside 50, and that one is tipped off the top. Again, going after it. Here comes McAleer. McAleer, a left-footed shot, and Shawnee McAleer has kicked her third of the afternoon and the first of this game, and Denver is rolling early. 2-1-13 Bulldogs. That's on the watch AFL scoreboard. No score for New York. Shawnee McAleer kicked two goals in the earlier game against Texas, and both of them were highly real goals. And she is a relatively new player, I believe. It'll be interesting to see how she... It'll be interesting to see how she uh, develops. And, you know, the Bulldogs, they've always had the forward punch, and they've always been tall players, but now they have a quick in McAleer. Ball goes up, and we're underway once again. This is Temple. Temple, two hops in. Castanic back up in the half-forward line. Here's Hargraves for New York. Jesse Aston in his error as well, the lone player from Cincinnati. Dykes clears it over the head, sits up for Sue Lees. Sue Lees gets to it, looks around, taken down. She should be gone, and she is. Great job by Janie Green to chase her down and get the free kick. Green's going to be very important. She's probably the fastest player wearing the black and white. With Wu on the mark, she just blows right through her. Green has a bounce, sends this one to the top of the square. Castanic, the Howie Castanic, couldn't handle it. Ball goes to ground. Moss is in there working. Go ahead and pick that one up. Big hit put in there by Al Leonard. McKittrick in there to try and chase. Bounces up. This is Benitez. Benitez sends this one up high. Temple tracking back and takes the mark over a late arriving Wu. And she'll play on quickly. Sends that one towards a yawning goal square. Cricket Temple has, it'll be just short. It's loose in front. And they handball it back. Great job, I believe, by, uh, it wasn't Bremner. It was somebody else. Oh, it was Fiona Matson who handballed that back. Uh, to Castanic and finds the mark out the poor boy. Over the top looking for Sue Lees. Castanic is giving chase there. How, uh, Lindsay Castanic picks it up. She runs to the edge of her 15, drops it out in front. Can Masher Mace run onto it? No, she can't. And it goes through for another behind. Watch AFL scoreboard. Denver 2-2-14, New York no score. Brian Barish here with you thanks to Visit Olathe and to Tasmanian. And to all of our other sponsors, Blundstone, as well as Aussie Sports USA, Odin Mortgage. New York will put the ball back into play. The ball blows high up in the air. Mac McLeod, two bites of the cherry. Thought she was taken high, but wasn't. Wu couldn't handle it cleanly. Hill just got her right foot. Bounces in front. There's McAleer. There's Masher. Masher is in front and out the back and trying to pick that one up a couple of times and just getting it out up the far side. And over to get it now and uh, going to clear. Looking for Temple. Couldn't get to it. Bounces the hat. And to, wow, that, that is high tackle. And Temple was off the ground. For someone who is six foot, like six foot three, six foot four, uh, that's kind of a that's a bit of a feat. Hawn looks for options, goes in short, bounces in front, out the back comes Green, just got her handball away, sent back by Denver. Green again goes back. Green sends this one down the line. Ball still in play, and finally the ball, it stays in, and Jessica Lynn over there for Denver. And the ball tumbles out while the boundary throw it. Denver 2-2, New York no score. Ball comes spinning back in the play. Temple grabs it out of the air. Doing very well in the ruck. Sends this one up high. Bounces away from Dykes. Bounces away from Lynn, and... 
really there was only blue jumpers around. New York could have pounced in on it, and that'll do it for the first quarter. All Denver in the early going in this first 10-minute quarter. Uh, New York did have some good passages of play. Should be pretty promising for the rest of the match, but the players will take a quick three-minute break, and so will we. We'll re-return for the second stanza of this one. When we come back, you're watching the 2023 U.S. AFL Super Regionals from Olathe, Kansas, here on USAFL.com. Back here at Lone Elm Park, Lone Elm Park here in Olathe, Kansas, the 2023 USAFL Super Regionals. Second quarter about to get underway here between New York and Denver. Denver leads 14 to nothing. That's on the Watch AFL scoreboard. Brian Barish back here with you, and away we go once again with Cricket Temple winning the hit out, but not to advantage because there is uh, – uh, Dykes, who kicks that one forward off the handball by Leonard, and all the way back. And here is Lauren Morgan from Jamaica originally. She is playing her first full game of Aussie Rules football, part of the North Star Blue Ox. And when we were talking to her over lunch, she is very excited to be a part of this. And uh, she uh, unfortunately was tackled uh, without getting rid of the footy, but she'll learn as this one is kicked inside by Bremner off the hands of Lindsey Castanek. Green knocks it backwards into uh, the fist of Solis as uh, Wilkerson got pushed off. Poor boy is in there pushing against uh, the 17 in there, who I think might be McCaskill. It cleans balls Jesse Aston, picked up by Rita Hill. Hill goes into the pocket. It'll roll, it'll skip, it'll bounce, it'll hop, and it will go out of bounds for a boundary throw-in about 40 meters around from the Denver target. Hahn and Temple, the two rucks nominate. And again, this time T Temple almost uh, brought it out, and this one is kicked in. Dykes comes in, had it punched out of the back by Hargraves. It bounces to... Castanek finds Leonard. Leonard sends this one inside off the chest. Two bites of the cherry, and she swallows it whole, does Lindsay Castanek. She might be two kicks from goal here. Minute and a half into this second quarter. Castanek's kick is in short. The pack forms, bounces free. Masher gives chase, but it goes through four behind. First point of the second quarter. Denver goes to the 2 3 15. New York yet to score. That's on the Watch AFL scoreboard. Coming up to the two minute mark. Still put the ball back in the play from the back line. And that one clean bowls. And it goes up on the far side. Goes and picked up, picked that one up, does uh, Alex Benitez. Benitez tries to get that one through. Morgan finds herself in the middle of the play once again. And that one, as Hill tried to get up on it, lucky to not get called for a high tackle, sends that one down the pocket. Suiz is giving chase. She tried to keep the ball in play, but it does roll out of bounds. Not a bad situation for the Bulldogs, as they'll have a boundary throw-in occur right in the shadow of their behind post. A lot of new players for this Denver side. A lot of players who have come in the last couple of years. Rita Hill has been one of them, and she'll be playing uh, for the USA national team. We'll have a secondary ball in. Umpire heaves this one back into play. McAleer, I think should we might see her wearing uh, the national colors at some point. She stays with it. Wu chips in, but it's taken by McLeod. That one went 15.0001 meters, had to. McLeod had to take that in self-defense. It bounces out to the near side, bounces by poor boy, and dropped the pill there, one of the uh, New York players. This is uh, Wu, who finds poor boy, not 15 play on. Now kicks this one up high in the middle, and Masher couldn't take that one, bounce off her hands. Morgan picks it up. Uh, Morgan gets it away, dropped the pill. Over to get it is Green. Green stayed with the footy, and Wu is in there. The Football in there is harder than, than 12th grade algebra, and Green stayed with it, but the boundary line interjects, and we'll have a boundary throw in Susan Bruce over there, number eight for the Denver Bulldogs. Again on the watch AFL scoreboard, Denver leads 15 to nothing, having won 50 to six earlier today, and uh, we'll find out uh, if we talk to Christina Sabral in this match what's happening in the uh, second game, as this one is 
goes out of bounds. Uh, it looks like, of course, unless Texas can stun the freeze, we may very well be heading for this New York, Minnes or rather this Denver, Minnesota game that we'll have for you a little bit later as the grand, essentially a grand final to this women's division. Ball gives up on the far side, off the hands of Bremner. Little stabby kick out to the near side. Going to be picked up by Dykes. Dykes sends that one on to the right. It goes into the pocket. Chasing after it is uh, Sue Lees. Little handball around looking for Masher. Masher, a lot of altitude on that. Not a lot of distance. And it is through for another behind. Kate's going to want that one back. It's 2 4 16 to no score. Watch AFL scoreboard. We mentioned, uh, Cece and I were talking about how interesting of, a, of an athlete and a person that uh, uh, Caitlin Masher Mace is. She is a, uh, as we mentioned, she is an ordained Buddhist, Pure Land Buddhist priest. She is a uh, former, uh, she currently plays Gaelic in addition to Aussie rules football. She is a former nationally ranked sumo wrestler. Uh, and just, just, just a very f wonderful and fascinating person. Uh, and, and what makes this community so great is, is how different everybody is and how varied everybody's background is. Is Austin, as our Jesse Aston, if Rex Hunt was here, she'd call, he'd call her the Villa for Aston Villa. And was held up by Hill. Ball goes to ground. Green wins it out. Lost control of the footy. Leonard tried to take advantage, but just got the kick away. Dykes has to go back and, and get it and does. Bootlegs around from Aston. Swings around on a sixpence. Throws that one out onto the right. Drops in front of McAleer. Going to go by. It's clean bowled by, uh, by Masher, who had a case for being held. Three black jumpers there to try and clear it out. They do laterally, but it's going to be picked up by Sulis, who gets away from McLeod and from LeVictor, and the ball rico ricochets off of McLeod and goes out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Lucy McLeod, wearing number 12 from Dubbo in New South Wales, former member of the Dubbo Demons uh, in the uh, Central uh, and New South Wales League. It's a very hardy league. There's only four teams in that women's division. Uh, two of them from Bathurst, one of them from Dubbo, and I'm blanking on the other one, but uh, she's in her fourth season of play with the New York Magpies women's side. Ball gets knocked down. Temple got shoved aside. Hill gets held up. Leonard now goes after the footy. Met by, uh, there's a shot for poor boy, and poor boy sees that one go desperately across the face, and another behind. Good pressure by the New York Magpies. All of these behinds have been off the boot. It's 2-5-17 Denver. No score for New York. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Brian Barish here with you alongside Craig Campbell, our intrepid camera person who has done a wonderful job bringing you the sights and sounds of this match here today, of these matches here, the first ever USAFL Super Regional here, thanks to Tasmanian and Visit Olathe. Going up for it was Castanic. Couldn't get it. Wu spun around by Green, but not before she got the kickoff. Here's Castanic. Squares up for goal. And did that squeeze in? Yes, sir. That's two for Lindsay Castanic in this game. She has been a force in the forward line, and they go to 3 5 23. New York, no score. Watch AFL scoreboard. I'm very impressed by Lindsay Castanic. You know, they took a couple of years off. After they had gone to the Nash to uh, to uh, uh, to the International Cup to start a family, and uh, both her and her wife Hallie, who we've called a couple of times today, and uh, you know they've come back and they've they've have a much different role on the side. It seems like on the field, whereas Hallie, we would see her constantly in the ruck. Uh, Lindsay Castanek, we would see more kind of in a midfield role, but now they're on opposite sides of the field and they are doing very, very good work. Here is Bremner uh, off the hit, or rather that was a check that that was Hawn uh, after the uh, hit out and the they almost had it and that one is cleared back in the other direction. Temple tracking back with the foot, he couldn't hang on to it. Hawn and Leonard was there. Aston is there as well for uh, New York and the ball squirts out. Temple shoves down uh, Leonard, no call. Dykes is over. Good shepherd thrown in by poor boy. She wins the footy, and they're going to call improper disposal, and it'll be a free kick to the Magpies. Janie Green will get it. Wu is on the mark. Green steps forward. 
bangs this one down the middle. Over the head of Dykes, chasing after it is 49 there. Emma Moss is in there as well, 37. And they stay with the footy now, and there's a big push off the, off the ball. And the umpire, the ball is locked away just like my secrets, and we'll have a ball up. Nearing the end of this second quarter and this first half, again, because of the heat, we're down the four 10-minute quarters. Less than 30 seconds to go. At 20 or so seconds. As the ball comes up on the far side, can New York get something going? Nope. Not right now. And there is a Wilkerson, it looks like, with the, with the ball. And the, that one, again, will be a ball up directly across from us. That might be the final act, and it is, of this first half. New York has had, again, the theme of this first half has been that New York has had some good, some good passages of play. They've linked up well at times, but Denver has been the classy team. They've been the ones that have uh, gotten their chances and made them count as Lindsey Kastanik has scored two goals. Shawneen McAleer has won for the Denver Bulldogs at halftime. The score, it's the Denver Bulldogs, three goals, five behinds, 23 points. New York, no score. We're going to take a break, take a breath, come right back for the second half of this one. Don't miss it. You're watching the 2023 USAFL Super Regionals from Olathe, Kansas, here on USAFL.com. Back here in the, uh, for the second half of this one, this uh, women's division match between the New York Magpies and the Denver Bulldogs. And I'm Brian Barish. We'll get into this in a minute. CeCe Sabral is with us here for the second half as Denver sends the ball forward now, or sends the ball goes backwards. Uh, New York having a little bit of the wind here in this second half. And they, of course, we stay trail 23 to nothing on the Watch AFL scoreboard. And going to get it now is, uh, that is Hawn, who picked that one up. Aston uh, dropped by Leonard and picking that one up. And I, I'm not sure what Jessica Lynn was doing, but that wasn't legal. And it will be a free kick. CeCe Sabral, as we said, with us from the D.C. Eagles. And uh, you've just come from the other field where you've reported that it is 24 to nothing, Minnesota lead. 24 to 1. So it looks like with the score here, 23 to nothing, although New York right now has had the territorial advantage uh, as they've come out to the near side. Uh, and uh, we don't have numbers for most of the New York team, so we're doing our best with them. Is Hallie Castanek, who all of a sudden has been busy here. Aston goes in after the footy. She's flattened by Castanek, and umpire Lori Roop calls for it and asks for a ball up. And we'll catch up CeCe in uh, just a moment here. We'll tell you that New York has had uh, some stop, some passages, some pretty good passages of play so far, but uh, Denver has had has been pretty much much classier. Uh, two goals for Lindsey Castanek, one for McAleer. They, those have been really the two uh, the two jets in the offensive line here in the early going. As the ball is up on that far side, it goes to ground. We're going to have uh, some uh, call for contact off the ball, and it will be a free kick to the Magpies. You know, the Magpies lost 44-1 to in their opening game. You're coming uh, – I know you've played them tons of times – they're very tenacious, and they're also very well-disciplined at teams. And the other thing that we they said is that as long as they can have good link-up play, and they've started to have that here in the second half, uh, you know, they, I think they, they're not out of the game by any stretch of the imagination. This is Lynn, who gets for a big booming kick, looking for uh, Bremner. M Marie LeVictor is there. LeVictor keeping her eye on the ball, swinging around on a sixpence, does Bremner, looking for Leonard in the middle of the ground. Aston did good to spoil, and then a magpie sandwich with bulldog bread which sounds like something that would be good at a bar at 1.30 in the morning after about four beers. And we'll have a ball up. Emma Moss in there against Hahn. Moss, a converted Gaelic player, as the ball comes to ground. Going to be picked up by Wu. Wu gets tackled there by one of the Magpies. Green is in there as well. And the ball stumbles out. Clean bowls uh, Matson. And now it's picked up. Looking to go back to go forward. Janie Green. Yeah, fantastic shepherd on Janie Green. And again, we don't have numbers, so I'd love to tell you who that is, but I don't know. And that one comes in the middle of the ground, and it's picked off off of a blade of grass by uh, by Cor Corinne Franz. 
Denver looked really good in the first game against, you know, they got a pretty decent challenge from Texas CC, but they looked really good in that first game. And so far, it seems like they've remained consistent even as the temperature has gotten hotter here in the second game. Yeah, absolutely, and we see that here as uh, Hargrave did well, and the ball is marked there by the number 17. Meg Ford is 17, and that one is sent forward. Uh, but it's picked off, and here comes Hallie Castanek. Just got the kick away, chipped it over for Lynn. Lynn will, will keep the ball going, and it's nicely marked in the middle. And that's going to be Lindsay Castanek, who's probably up to about 15 touches, looking for uh, a player there, finding her in Sulees, and Sulees will go back. Always nice when you see them chain these possessions together. Long handball, long kick over into the corner. That's going to be picked up and spinning around is McAleer again. And that one bounces in. It was a Wilbur Post. Hello, I'm Mr. Ed. And it's through four behind. 3-6-24 on the Watch AFL scoreboard. No score for New York. The skills I mentioned when we talked in the last game, CC, about how the skills in the women's game are getting better and better every game. But what we're seeing more of as well is we're seeing these connected possessions, completed passes. It was It used to be a lot of ground-level football in the U.S. AFL women, even at the top level, but now we're seeing more awareness and more skillful play, and that just raises everybody up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, of course, what makes it more interesting when you have players like, you know, we mentioned Jess Blecker, who plays for San Francisco, when they go over to uh, when she was in the Northern Territory a while ago, and they play a lot of ground level wet footy football there in their wet season. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's good to be at both, but we're seeing the more clean possessions of play now, and that's, and that's just great to see. So we have a, uh, looks like it's going to be a free kick here to, Denver, as we said, they lead 24 to nothing. Brian Barish alongside Christina Sabral. The wind is, has been steady the entire day, CC. It's kind of swirling. Yeah, it really is. As we said, the temperature, you know, is a heat advisory, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, as that one is dropped up on the far side, and then a driving kick to find Rita Hill. Hill goes into the middle of the ground, up over the top. And the ball squirts out free. New York able to get to it. Wu is in there. Now it is Bremner. That was a shovel hand pass. Looks for Leonard. Leonard, pitchfork ball over the top. Drops in front. McAleer is there. She's thrown down for her troubles. Wu is there. And Green is there as well, I believe. And now it is uh, Hill who picks that one up. And the ball goes back. Here is Lindsay Castanek, runs through the uh, black jumper gauntlet. It's knocked down by Hargrave, who's able to clear that away. It'll bounce in front of Dykes, takes a, an off-spin break bounce. Aston Harry's the kick and sends that one kind of free-wielding up on the far side. It does find the boundary line and go out of bounds with, let's check the clock here, unofficially less than three minutes to go here in the third quarter. Ball comes spinning back in the play directly across from us. And New York trying to get the ball forward, but that one is intercepted by Allie Dykes. We mentioned in the first game how really what she brings to the table. And I like, you know, another tall player. Uh, and again, going to be playing on the national team. And, and uh, another tall player for Christina Licata when they play, when they play uh, Canada in a couple of months. Ball gets knocked down by Castanek. Looks for Matson. Very good, but the kick did not come off. And there's Corona who gets corralled. That's a great tackle by uh, by Sue Lees, and then cleared out the back. Yeah, Denver's defense standing up tall. There is Aston 
down mushroom farming. Uh, Moss is able to get it away looking for Temple. Off the knees there of Franz, and then Hill was able to get it free. Dykes is chasing after it. Moss going after, but a good little shepherd thrown in there by Al Leonard, but that will all come to, to naught as it's picked off by, uh, by, by Andy Hargraves, correct. Thank you. I like taught up in my brain and everything. Yeah, and, and I like Hargraves. Hargraves was in the ruck at one time, but with the addition now of Cricket Temple, they've got so many tall players as Troy Danilo's side. They are tall. It's just a matter of getting the speed in those connections. As here comes uh, Denver the other way, playing that one into the middle, looking for Masher through her hands. Out the back there is Bremner. Sidesteps, kicks, goes for a point. And another behind. And I think Denver might be a little upset that they're three goals seven here. I think they would like to be a little bit more accurate. But that also shows how well New York does. And New York's defense, and you talk about their defenders, Drea Casillas and the past we've seen Taylor Davidson out there. They've always had a really, really good defensive mindset. It's just turning that into attack. And now here is Denver as uh, Bremner shoots for goal, and that one has gone out on the full. But, yeah, very good defense, and they're, they're causing some of these mistakes. Yeah, really, re I agree. Um, it's... it's uh, it's, it, it is, and it's the way the wind is, and of course we still have a quarter to play after this. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, unlike the AFL where they've been switching, where they switch every quarter, they've only been switching at the half, which is interesting, but that's, it is what it is here. And uh, New York trying to get it out of the back. We mentioned New York. They've got players from a number of other teams as uh, we have a high contact, and we'll talk about that probably a little bit more. It is quarter time. We'll talk about that on the other side of the break, uh, me and CeCe. But at the end of three quarters, it's 25 to nothing on the Watch AFL scoreboard, Denver the lead. And CeCe, a balanced quarter. New York came out of the gate looking pretty well. Um, well, hang on a second. They are still playing, as I thought I heard a whistle from over there. Well, they're going to give this as a – well, they're going to give this as a as – a, well, hang on a second. It's it's a, it should be the quarter. All right. Well, it 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 is it is the quarter. So uh, that will not count. That score does not does not count. Uh, it is still twenty five to nothing. But go ahead. I'm sorry. So yeah, they're definitely. I, I mean, they're 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 tightening up on defense, which is good. New York. It, for, it forces them to really kind of challenge them. Well, that'll do it for the third quarter. The fourth quarter is coming up on the other side of this tiny little break. You're watching the 2023 USAFL Super Regionals from Olathe, Kansas, thanks to Tasmanian here on USAFL.com. Fourth quarter action about to get underway here in the second round of the women's division. 2023 USAFL Super Regionals from Olathe, Kansas. Thanks to our friends at Visit Olathe and Tasmanian Brian Barish and CeCe Sabral here. And we're underway in the fourth quarter. Denver on the Watch AFL scoreboard leads 25 to nothing as Lucy McLeod goes toe to toe against uh, Bremner, who ended up second best out of that. But here is Fiona Matson, who took the mark and ran like three steps afterwards, and she's going to get paid. So here is Fiona Matson looking for her, for her first goal of the afternoon. Drea Casillas is on the mark. Kick is on the way. It fades right. It stays right, bounces back into the field of play in the goal square, and it's through four behind. Another behind conceded by New York. Denver goes to 3-8-26, New York no score. Let's talk about Drea Casillas, an original member of the USAFL, has played in uh, women's, played in every season. So this is 19 seasons for Drea Casillas in the USAFL. And not only making her mark on the field, she helped found this New York Magpies team, CC, but really a lot of work behind the scenes. President of the Women's past president of the Women's Association, former member of the US. She's done all sorts of things for this game and Really, she's helped keep this women's program going with so many other people. She is the uh, she is the Secretary of Defense. That is her nick. That is my nickname for her. And uh, we are going to have a free kick here for Denver. 
Here's Allison Leonard. As we said, began with the Seattle Grizzlies, came over in 2021 to play for the Denver Bulldogs. Going to play for Team USA this summer. Long kick up on the far side looking for Wu and Shalise. And they both watched the ball go out of bounds. They said 20, 26 to nothing. And uh, we said if West New York is, uh, West New York and Texas can make comebacks, uh, we are eyeing down a, a grand final showdown. And there is Matson who runs at home, and Matson does well. The loose ball in front, that's the easiest goal she's going to have for some time. And so Fiona Matson gets her first goal of the afternoon. And Denver on the watch AFL scoreboard goes to 4 8 32. New York no score. A little bit of a breakdown defensively, but a good awareness by Matson to run on pretty much in line with the goal square and in stride kick at home. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And, uh, you know, and, and as we mentioned, you know, as good as they are, Denver always seems to have the ability, and we talked about this in the last game, how they've seemed to do really well at, at the skills. They play this, this the tr traditional round of footy, and a lot of it has been a lot of their recruits over the years, and that has really, really helped them get to the point where they are now. Six-time national champions, runners-up in 20, let's see, 2016, 2017, uh, 2021 as well. And the ball goes, there is Franz, and Morgan bumps off of her like on a moon bounce, and that one will go down the way as chasing after it is Leonard. Leonard going after it, but Aston is there to corral it. Jesse Aston from Cincinnati, and Moss had it stripped out of her hands. And there is Aston. Aston dropped the pill. Uh, what is that? That's Hawn there who had it, lost it, sent forward by Green, bopping in front looking for Laura Musser. Temple is in there as well. Somebody got collared high, no call, and throw a blanket over a dozen players, and we'll have a ball up just on the New York offensive side here. Ball in the air. Moss now in the ruck. Here's Cricket Temple. Temple with a low driving kick. Big bounce to the top, but it's going to be picked off by Castanek, or rather by uh, 13. Check that. That's... Um, don't know who that is uh, for uh, for Denver, and the ball goes out of bounds. Yeah, unlisted here for Denver. We they put down the numbers, and sometimes we have a player who doesn't match the number description. So, such is the life of being a USAFL commentator. As the ball comes spinning back in the play, great smother in there off the foot of Dykes Green swings around on a sixpence, throws that one down. Here is Temple. Great pickup by Temple especially for somebody as tall as she is, and handballs it over and cleared out of the back, and the ball is marked by Green. You can kind of see in the back there, uh, I, I know we saw earlier, I'm pretty sure we saw um, Christina Licata, the USA Freedom Coach, is working around here. She makes last-minute decisions ahead of the USA Freedoms match against Canada, the 49th Parallel Cup. That's coming up in Racine, Wisconsin on August 19th, and if you're watching this and that hasn't happened yet, try to make some plans to come and watch. It should be a good day of Aussie of international Aussie rules up at the score complex uh, up in Wisconsin, where it might be a little bit cooler than it is here. We hope. Ball comes back in the play. Here is Hill. Hill being held off the ball, no call. And here comes poor boy. Poor boy shuffles to the inside, high in the air, but marked by Casillas. Casillas out to the near side, looking for Musser. Uh, over there is uh, Benitez. Benitez gets it away, looking for Matson, and then going back and trying to stay with the footy now, going to pick that one up and trying to get that one back the other direction. Skitters across, going to be picked up by Dykes. Dykes 
Gets away from Moss. Travels. Now kicks this one high in the air. Looking for Masher Mace. Drops in front. Masher Mace has it. Couldn't handle it cleanly. Being harassed there by LeVictor. It comes out and it's going to be picked up. This is McAleer. McAleer handballs it over. Looking for Matson. It is, but the mustard came off the hot dog. Ball comes to ground and taken down. No call. But hands it basically to McAleer, who throws that one onto the left. And unfortunately, it comes off the side of the boot. Did find the field of play, I think. It is, in fact, out on the full, the, uh, as thanks to Tom Ellis, our spotter. <laughs> and uh, the ball comes out, and it'll be a, it'll be a free kick. That was like, like to see the pace pick up. Good job by both sides to, to, to support and shepherd, and that, that provided for some very, very entertaining passage of play, CC. Good to see that in the women's game, and, and we're seeing that more and more, as we've been saying. especially in the second game of a three-game day where it's 95 degrees. Yeah, uh, there is Benitez going through, and uh, that one will come through the uh, Denver, rather. And uh, we will have a ball up. It is on the Watch AFL scoreboard, 4-8-32 for Denver. No score for New York. Uh, roughly a little about two minutes and 20 seconds to go. So Denver's going to go to 2-0. Two, uh, two and oh. New York... Going to drop to 0-2, and, and we'll have to check. That is a great job as, as uh, that's uh, uh, McLeod who was able to get it off. Benitez gets away from Musser, and it falls into the hands of one of the Denver players. It might have been McAleer, and it will be a free kick to New York as a good tackle out of the back. Yeah, they're still playing. They're still playing tenaciously to the end. That's the New York way. Here is Allie Leonard, kicks that one on the way. It starts left, it's fading left, but it's marked in front by Caitlin Masher Mace. She's been a little bit, a little bit of the yips with her free with her free kicks here, but she's only 25 meters out. That one drifts across the face and through four behind. It's not a commentator's curse unless they make it, in which case it's a reverse commentator's curse, I guess. 4 9 33 for Denver. No score for New York. A buck 15 to go. And uh, Denver has been looking really, really good. And as we said, they look headed to that, to a what amounts to a grand final against Minnesota coming up in a couple of hours. And we'll have this match for you on USAFL.com as the ball tumbles out of bounds. We're going to make the assumption, and it might be a dangerous assumption, but we're going to make the assumption that Minnesota is going to win that other game. Uh, I'm, we'll, 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 we'll wait till we get it, but it's going to be a really, really good matchup, a mouth-watering matchup as the ball comes to ground. And here comes Allie Dykes. Dykes kicks that one on the right, high in the air, and ball is marked by Sulu's who played on. And that is the cherry on top of the Sunday. Oh, never mind. Well, I mean, it's still a cherry on top of the Sunday. Four ten thirty four. It's just, it's not. It, it's not. It's a, the cherry has a pit. I, I, don't, I don't know. We'll we'll. Yes, there we go. It's on the ground, and you're gonna have to throw it out and get a new one. Uh, four ten thirty four is the score over New York. No score. It's inconsequential, possibly, maybe with the exception of. If that game between Denver and New York ends in a draw, it'll come down to percentage as we're in the waning seconds of this one. And it's a free kick. There's the siren. And that is that. Well, New York came to play here. I mean, that's a siren. And, I mean, it was a free kick to Denver, so that should be it. It is, yes. Everybody was still standing around. So Denver wins this one 4-10-34 to no score for New York. Listen. We'll give Denver the plaudits. We've been giving them the entire game, but let's talk about New York. A lot of really good, especially some of the newer players. And we mentioned Emma Moss. Good to see her get some experience in the ruck with her size at six foot four. We saw some of the players that we've seen, like Janie Green and whatnot. They got their touches. New York can keep their heads held up, and I think they're going to be in for a really, really good matchup against Texas in this final game. And that's what kept, and that's really what kind of kept them. Listen, it kept them buoyant for a long time, and 
and, and, and against this very tough Denver team. Well, thank you, Christina Sobral, CC, for joining us again on the call. We'll hear you again for the next game. And we hope we'll see you back, uh, thanks to our friends here at Tasmanian and at Visit Olathe. I'm Brian Barish. Once again, the final score, the Denver Bulldogs 34, the New York Magpies 0. For everyone here, including Craig, our camera person, this is Brian Barish saying so long for now.